And so she uh, said, please uh, bring me up in prayer. So, okay, we'll bring her up in prayer. Does it, anybody else have a re- prayer request? Anybody? Spoken? No? Usually some will come later, and then we'll, ne- we'll never get them until at the end of the service, though. So. Okay. How many unspoken requests? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's just take them right before the Lord. and uh, No matter what, we've got to stay inspired, amen? We don't want it artificial. It's kind of like that scripture, and I, I, I have to paraphrase it because a lot of times I just can't remember how it goes, but it says, uh, it's talking about our uh, problems today are in no comparison to the reward that awaits us. And this is something we just got to believe, that something is waiting us, brothers and sisters, it's just beyond our imagination. So this is what we're expecting. Precious Savior, Lord, we humbly look to you tonight. Lord, and as we look at uh, the altar in the present day, the way that your presence is, not as it was before, but Lord, how you've come into our hearts, how you motivate us. And Lord, how you, can, uh, you know our thoughts. And Lord, you, you, you know our needs. So tonight, we bring those needs before you, Lord. And uh, for our sister, uh, Sister Hughes, Lord, she's asking for prayer. She's having some problems, and, and Lord, with her health, and she's just asking that you might, Lord, just, uh, I like that song, uh, Someone Touched Me. She needs a touch. So, Lord, how we ask that you might just, Lord, as you said, you were, Lord, them gifts, when you came up, you brought gifts. And that manifestation is still here today. It's real. So, Lord, we just look for that precious gift of healing. Lord, touch her. And, Lord, there might be others that aren't here yet or, or that are somewhere else asking. Just, Lord, remember me. So, Lord, we bring those up, each and every one of them, Lord. Uh, might be a brother or sister from another state, from another country, another place. But, Lord, uh, there are brothers and sisters. So we look to you, Lord, for whoever that might be. Now, Lord, we've seen a show of hands for the unspoken requests, and we ask that, Lord, you might touch each one of those. Lord, they're just as real. Sometimes we just don't want to bring it out or, or stipulate what it might be, but, Lord, you know our thoughts. So, Lord, here we do. We look at this altar and say, we just bring it forth, Lord, knowing that, that you will give us an answer. Maybe sometimes we don't get the answer we expect, but, Lord, you've never failed us. And you're still the same God. So, Lord, we ask tonight as we enter into our service that you move on each thought, each one be controlled by your spirit as the enemy likes to just take our mind off of what's going on here and uh, let it allow us to go somewhere else in thought. Move upon, Lord, uh, each individual, uh, a song service that this is our, our opportunity, Lord, to say, I thank you and do it together. Even when we read the scriptures, we see how Lord, they're, they're singing in heaven, it says. So, Lord, and they're, and they're worshiping you. So, Lord, we, we come in this hour of worship, Lord, to, to present ourselves, as that song goes, as a living sacrifice. Now, Lord, as we look to the message, that you might anoint, Lord, the watchman, that you might, Lord, allow his mind, as it speaks in the Old Testament, that the oracles be of God, that, Lord, you just saturate him with your spirit. Allow the things that he says, Lord, will bring to a revelatory mind is it's your Holy Spirit that does this. Lord, the things that you'd have said. And Lord, again, we just thank you for everything, and we ask it in your name, in the precious and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's good to be here. We'll sing out of the blue book this evening. We'll sing page 234. Oh, the judgment day is coming. What an awful 
death will be Cry forever is my refuge Rock of ages bled for me I'm a loving mother When the world's on fire Don't you want that bosom To be your pillow Hide me over In the rock of ages Rock of ages Teach me, Lord, teach 
Something that's a hard time to do is just wait. Wait upon the Lord. Wait for your answer. But he's always been there and he's always there and he always comes through. We just got to wait on it. And it says we shall renew our strength and we shall mount up his wings like an eagle. Page 215. never been a day like this day to me. There's never been a light that shines so bright as this light, this glorious light. There's never been a day like this day to me. There's never been a day Some things we can't move on our own, but we can move mountains with him, with his power. It's not our power. Like I said the other day, it's not our goodness, it's his goodness that you see that flows over us. Let's sing how great is our God. It says he rolled back the waters 
of that mighty Red Sea. And he said, I will lead you if you put your trust in me. You got to learn to lean on him. I'm thankful. I'm blessed tonight. So happy. How great is our God. God. How great is his name. He's a great today said he said he said I'm ready to move out of Illinois <laughs> you know he said I'm tired of this state and I'm ready to move out and you know what I believe that God's called each one of us to Illinois he's called us here to this church and he's called us for this day and hour and we can't look at this day as hour that we're living in and say I wish I lived a hundred years ago because he called you for today right and we got to live in today and he's called us to be that light in a world full of darkness and he's called us to be a light and we have a purpose to do and I'm thankful so as long as he wants me here this is where I'll be you know and that's that's where I that's where I want to be where where the Lord wants us to be where he wants to use us to be I'll turn over to brother Hefner. With all those inspiring songs, may God bless you, brother. No matter how much we try, our recordings aren't going to look like uh, 
like a, a movie here. <laughs> All right. All right. You can all take a seat. Um, it's funny because I've always told people I was born in the wrong century. <laughs> and the brother just said that. <laughs> um, We, we think that other people had it, had it better, but it, it's, not even that, it's not even the difficulty of anything. It's, it's just, it's just a, the, the filth around you uh, that makes you sick. And, uh, but you know, brothers and sisters, we, we, we can go back 1,000 years, 2,000 years, or 5,000 years uh, and see that it's always been the same. It's always been this... There's always been that element that's been uh, close to God and those that have been very far from Him. All right. I want to take, uh, take this message, brothers and sisters, into the book of Esther. Um, so we're going to go through the book of Esther. And let me, let me start by saying the following, brothers and sisters, that that uh, we touch these things because, because they matter. Things that we've been touching over this last several, several months, they matter. They affect us. God, is, God took the time to give visions and dreams and write it in His Word. And so we touch it. And uh, a, lot of th- a lot of times things happen around, around us. And, uh, and there's some things that we don't kn- quite know how to look at. So we, we kind of reserve judgment. Um, and we ask, how should I look at this as a Christian? What should my position or what should my opinion be as a Christian? We've taken the attitude a lot of times, brothers and sisters, like we don't want to take a position on one side or the other. Um, but brothers and sisters, we, we touched on a message a few weeks ago or months ago um, that... Uh, God has his own position, brothers and sisters, and and we want to know what that is. And that's the side that we want to support. Um, And so I thought I'd open with that. Um, I want to look at the second chapter of Esther, verse 5. The first chapter is concerns the queen. And the queen falls from the king's uh, favor because she didn't come when he asked her to. Um, So starting with verse 5, it says, Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. So we all remember that occasion, brothers and sisters, in verse 7. And he brought up Hadassah, or Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own, took for his own daughter. So it's laying the, the, the setting, brothers and sisters, to let us just know the background here 
um, of our characters here, our main characters, is going to be uh, Mordecai, is going to be Esther, brothers and sisters, um, and the king. Okay, and so far, that's all we, ha- we have. Um, let's jump over to verse 16. It says that, uh, so what happens here, brothers and sisters, is um, they're looking for a new queen. The king is, is in need of a, of a, of a in Veggie Tales, I think she didn't make him a sandwich. And he wanted a sandwich. And so he fired her, right? Um, she needed someone to make him sandwiches at midnight when he got hungry. And the brother, you look puzzled. <laughs> he's, like, he's doing this. He's like, what are you talking about, brother? <laughs> we got to fill in the blanks, right? You need a midnight snack, you know. No? Okay. <laughs> Everything, uh, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure they ask Isaac this, but everyone always asks me, did you have to go to school for that? And I tell them, everything I needed to know, I've needed to know, I learned in kindergarten. <laughs> That's what I always say. Um, so Esther was taken unto King Asuerus, unto his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month to uh, to Beth in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti or Vashti. And so we get an introduction here, brothers and sisters, and we know how she got to be uh, how she became to be the queen of the greatest empire of her time, brothers and sisters. And uh, what's interesting, brothers and sisters, is this is, this is necessary for what's going to come later because so far, you know, she's an orphan. And... Uh, I was listening, brothers and sisters, to uh, a lawyer who, who said, I was an orphan. He's a millionaire today. Very well known. Everyone here knows him. He says, and, I, and, 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 and I'm thankful for, uh, to God that I was born in a place where I had opportunities to express my, my, the gifts in my life. And it made him very wealthy. We have, brothers and sisters, and you've, you hear a lot of stories like that in America over the centuries. But Esther, brothers and sisters, was an orphan, had nothing, maybe nothing was expected, or, or, or uh, maybe not much was expected, right, of her, brothers and sisters. But it's, it's, we learn from these things, brothers and sisters, because... We learn, I'm trying not to give, out, give up the rest. <laughs> let's, just, just, let's just focus on her, brothers and sisters, and, and look at her situation. I don't know, brothers and sisters, whether it was something that everyone wanted to be chosen. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Um, but brothers and sisters, God gave her beauty. And it would help her get places. All right? Now, okay, let's go into chapter 3 and verse 5. Now, the king, brothers and sisters, Asuerus or, or, or uh, Circes had, he had, brothers and sisters, a right hand man. We're going to read about him here in a sec. Um, and, brothers and sisters, something gets stirred up in that man 
that causes, brothers and sisters, uh, a lot of the people in the, in the empire to begin to fear. Now, in Esther 3.5, it says, And when a Haman, and so Haman, brothers and sisters, is high-ranking uh, uh, assistant and more than that, He is a man, brothers and sisters, and you're always going to have men like this. They want to impress, and they feel that they deserve respect. Brothers and sisters, it's someone who doesn't know what to do with the authority they have. And that's the kind of man that Haman is, brothers and sisters. And so what happens in verse 5, it says, And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. That was Haman. Then was Haman full of wrath. In six, and and uh, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Assuerus, even the people of Mordecai. And so he starts, brothers and sisters, hating one man, disliking one man, being offended by one man. And it turns, brothers and sisters, into hating the entire race. Hating all Jews. Because Mordecai was a Jew. You know, it's something, brothers and sisters, that's very strange to us uh, because we don't think this way. Right? We don't think this way. Um, where in a lot of the world, brothers and sisters, it's still, this way of thinking is still very common. Okay, we don't think in this country, brothers and sisters, uh, in terms of of uh, you know judging an entire race, brothers and sisters, because of one man, or hating an entire race because of one man. It, it's just not the way we 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 think. But brothers and sisters, he hated the entire race of the Jews. He hated God's people. Now. So he, he has this, uh, this plan, and, it's, and it's go he's going to lay it out here in the next uh, few verses. Let's look at verse 7. It says, in, in the first month, that is in the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Asuerus. Wow, I mean, this is quite a few years later, okay? They, they cast her, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is, the month of Adar. And Haman said unto the king of Suarez, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If, the, if, the, if it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And so he presents this plan, brothers and sisters, and, and I don't know, I mean, he must have been very trusted because it doesn't seem like he, uh, the king asked very many questions here. But there's no name as to who these people are, right? It's just uh, uh, anonymous people here. And brothers and sisters, were they really being uh, 
uh, contrary to the king. They had their traditions, they had their customs, their religious beliefs. Um, I don't know, brothers and sisters, how, I, I, as far as I know, in the kingdom, brothers and sisters, they were left to do as they pleased. Uh, that was the nature, brothers and sisters, of, of the Persians to just allow a people to, to do as they did before and follow their customs. But, brothers and sisters, we have to understand, and, and the Jews, the Jews today, brothers and sisters, and, and Christians, we can see that God's people have always been persecuted. The Jew has, has suffered persecution throughout the millennia. And they've been pointed out, signal, signal, signal all out, brothers and sisters, as the one people that, that, uh, that have continually been hated, persecuted, uh, even, even uh, what's the word when you try to wipe out an entire race? <laughs> Genocide. They've been, they've, been, they've been hunted down this way, brothers and sisters. And that's the plan that he, that's what, exactly what he wanted to do, brothers and sisters. He wanted to commit genocide with the Jews. Now we know, brothers and sisters, that there are genocides to come. We know that the Jew, brothers and sisters, will be persecuted in the future as well. There's persecution. There's, there was a lot of persecution of Jews in Europe uh, last year, and, and I haven't, well, this year just started. But last year and the year before that, they were, there was a lot of, uh, they were burning down a lot of their synagogues, uh, beating up a lot of people, Jews. Um, it's a resurgence of a, a hatred for the Jew. But brothers and sisters, Whenever the Jew has been put on that list, brothers and sisters, where they, it, is, it, is, it becomes necessary to wipe them out, we know, brothers and sisters, and, and I want you to, 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 to remember a message about Amalek. <laughs> we talked about Amalek a while back. Um, it must have been six months ago or, or so. Haman was an Amalek. He was. And, uh, and we can see, brothers and sisters, that that spirit was in him to hate the Jew, to desire, brothers and sisters, to murder Jew, the Jews. That's that spirit, brothers and sisters, that is going to be on that Antichrist. That, that spirit of Antichrist, we can see it in Haman. We could see it, brothers and sisters, in Hitler. Hating God's people. Okay, so he made his plea here, and then in verse 10 he says, And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, King Agag of the Amalekites, the Jews' enemy. That spirit, brothers and sisters, that spirit was in that man to hate the Jew. To hate the Jew, brothers and sisters. And he would do everything that was in his power. He would do everything he could to destroy the Jew. And this is, brothers and sisters, he, is, he has 
uh, arrived at a position of power, and he sees the opportunity, and he seizes it, brothers and sisters, this is how I can, I can do away with the Jews and Mordecai. All right. Let's go over to chapter 5, verses 12. I'm going to do 12, 13, 14. We're just moving very quickly through this uh, book. Uh, 12. Haman said, moreover, yeah. Oh, okay. So let me, let me catch you up here. Um, Mordecai finds out of this plan. This decree has been sent out, brothers and sisters. Uh, Esther has been made known or, or made known of this decree. Um, it says, Haman said, moreover, yeah, Esther the queen did not let, uh, did let no man come in with the king into the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Um, all right, I, I, I skipped quite a bit here, brothers and sisters, but we know the story of how that once she finds out, and once she talks to her uncle, um, Uh, who's like her dad, right? Her stepdad is, is family. Once she talks to Mordecai, brothers and sisters, and, and uh, I'm looking for that scripture. If, I feel like... Uh, like I'm missing uh, something here. Ah, you know what? I'm sorry. Let's go to Esther 4. Esther chapter 4, verse 12. You know what it is? Um, I have Esther 4, 12, and I have Esther 5, 12. And I skipped an entire chapter. Okay. Esther 4, 12, 13, and 14. It's the same verses in the next chapter. Uh, but in 12, and they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house. A lot of times, brothers and sisters, we, we don't feel like, uh, like we're in any danger. Right? That we are protected. Now, what is he trying to tell her, brothers and sisters, is that a lot of times we see that, it's, that, that wrong is being done to our neighbor, and we don't do anything, right? Why? Because it's not me, right? But everyone knows that little story that said, brothers and sisters, that, they, that, that first they came for so-and-so, and I did nothing, Right? because I wasn't one of them. And then they came for the other people that were a certain way, brothers and sisters, but I didn't do anything because I wasn't one of them. But then they came for me. And it was too late to do anything. This is where he's coming from, brothers and sisters. It's just because you're the queen, someone's going to give you away. So think not with thyself that thou shalt, escape, thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Don't let that, don't entertain that thought at all because it's not true. Many times we can feel so comfortable and we don't want to feel any discomfort, brothers and sisters, to help another. Now he is trying, brothers and sisters, as a father 
It does. To have her understand the gravity of the situation. To wake her up, brothers and sisters, to, a, to the problem that exists in the real world. Not just in, in, in his world, but this is actually the same world that she is living in. Because a lot of times we, we, we think that we're, we're too divided or too separate from the problem. That it's not for us to do anything. And it may not be for us to do anything first, but at some time, brothers and sisters, at some point, it's going to be, we're going to have to step up. Now he's telling her, it is your turn to step up. It is your turn to do something. Now it's that moment. It wasn't your moment before. Now, this is very important, brothers and sisters, that we understand this. And verse uh, 414 now. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time. Wow. If you hold your peace, if you say nothing. Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. He was very certain, brother and sister, very sure that God would deliver them through someone. If it wasn't her, it would be someone else. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth? Now he's placing a, a thought in her mind, brother and sisters. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? This is, you can, you can just stay thinking about this for days, brothers and sisters. This could be why that little orphan girl that was you, who no one believed, brothers and sisters, would amount to very much without support from her father and her mother, were placed and made queen. That's pretty amazing, brothers and sisters. How many men, brothers and sisters, and have we, do we read in the scriptures how that God deals with them from, from, their, uh, from a child and, and, and causes things to affect them in such a way, brothers and sisters, that they're that, uh, that, they, that they're at the right place at the right time to do a great work. And this is her situation, brothers and sisters. Esther, an orphan girl, very beautiful, has caught the, uh, the king's eye. He is now the queen. And brothers and sisters, and her people need her. And he tells her, what if this is the reason why you were placed and made queen? I mean, that is something. I mean, it, it is said, brothers and sisters, that Darius was the first civil rights proponent, <laughs> okay? And, and uh, at, at least the Iranians uh, lift him up that way. And, uh, and, he, and, he, and he was good. He was good, better than, than a lot. And we, we've, we looked at a little bit at his, at his story. But this is the kind of, uh, of a belief, brothers and sisters, that, that existed in this kingdom, in this empire. And so it was, in a lot of ways, brothers and sisters, it was less oppressive than other places. But he, uh, he, he, he tells her this, brothers and sisters. Is it possible 
is who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And this, this phrase has been made, is very popular for such a time as this. Because it points to the present, run sisters. It's not later or, or yesterday, it's right now. It puts you on the spot. And it shakes you, brothers and sisters, because you realize I can't put this off for another moment. For such a time as this. That time was unique, brothers and sisters. And it wasn't something that you could wait, brothers and sisters, because the day when the Jews would be uh, would be massacred was a day on the calendar. That day was approaching for such a time as this. And, he, you, and you could see out into, brothers and sisters, into the empire and see the fear in the people, the fear in the Jews. Right? They felt, brothers and sisters, like they were prey, like the whole world was against them. And Mordecai, brothers and sisters, and it wasn't that Mordecai wanted to put this off on someone else, but she was well positioned, or better than, than, than almost any, to do something about it. And so this is, brothers and sisters, where she, she asks Mordecai and, uh, and some of the Jews to fast, to pray, that she would take action, brothers and sisters, that she would go before the king, and, uh, and the, the custom there was, brothers and sisters, that you couldn't approach the king unless you were called. And so it, it made her very nervous to go before the king, brothers and sisters, because it wasn't like they lived together. She probably had her own house, <laughs> attached, maybe, maybe attached to the palace, maybe not. But brothers and sisters, it wasn't like she saw him every night. She came, she presented herself, brothers and sisters, allowed or waited for him to see her. Uh, see her. Um, and it made him so glad, brothers and sisters, to see her that he calls her over, right? He loved her. What can I do for you? Ask, me, ask for whatever you want up to the half of my kingdom. And that's when, brothers and sisters, we know how the story goes. She has a plan. I'm going to, and, uh, and, and, and she invites the king and Haman to a banquet. Okay? Food and conversation and run sisters, just a good time under the stars, something like that. And uh, that's where we get to now uh, chapter 5. I had missed all that. So chapter 5, verse 12, down to 14. Haman said, moreover, yes, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared, but myself, and tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Oh yeah, he likes to show off, right? Just the king and I, no one else. 13, yet all this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. So he has all this power. He has this status, brothers and sisters, of going to banquets with the king. And yet, just the fact that Mordecai is there bothers him so much. 
and he burns with, with envy and anger, brothers and sisters, and hatred. It says, yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai, the Jew sitting in the king's gate. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him, let a gallows be made of 50 cubits high. I, I don't know why uh, the height matters that much. It could be 50, it could be 60. It could be 20. <laughs> Maybe some more people see it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, maybe um, they drop them and uh, they don't jerk until, until it's almost at the floor. I don't know. Maybe that's, that's the idea. Then said his, uh, his wise men, oh, I'm sorry, um, and 14, 514 we're at. And tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the king, or, or and the thing, please Haman. And he caused the gallows to be made. And so... This is interesting. I included this because of another scripture that comes later. His, it says that his wife and his friends told him this, and it pleased him. All right. Now, what happens, brothers and sisters, is that when Haman comes, or the next day approaches the king, he asks Haman, Haman, how, how can we honor, how can the king honor someone that that, uh, that saved his life. And we had left this out, brothers and sisters. Mordecai had saved his life because he had caught a plot or discovered a plot of two men that were servants of the king. And brothers and sisters, they were looking to kill him. And Mordecai reveals the plot, brothers and sisters, and... Uh, I'm sure they got rid of these people. And so the king is grateful to Mordecai. Well, Haman this whole time, brothers and sisters, thinks he's referring to, to him. Well, of course, if, uh, if you're going to honor this certain person, thinking it's himself, brothers and sisters, I would send the, one of your greatest, I don't know what he called them in, in, in the scripture, but, uh, but his, his, his most esteemed you know, servants or assistants or, or whatever the word was, brothers and sisters, and would parade him on his, on, his, on his royal horse before the people. And of course, he's thinking, brothers and sisters, of, of, of the best that can be done to elevate this man because he's believing it's himself. Well, it turns out that Mordecai is the man that he wants to honor and his most highly regarded uh, uh, you know, uh, helper is Haman. And so Haman is humiliated, brothers and sisters, having to take Mordecai and, uh, and, and probably walk, walk uh, next to him leading his horse or something through town. That's not what he expected. That's not what he expected, brothers. He planned, he was expecting to go in there, share his plan about hanging Mordecai, and instead, he is parading Mordecai. How things change. Now, we read that verse, brothers and sisters, 514, where his wife and his friends tell him to do this. Now, when we jump over into chapter 6, verse 13, 6, 13, I want you to see what it says here. Verse 
Where are we going with all this? There's a point to it. <laughs> and Haman told Zeresh, his wife, again, his wife, and all his friends. <laughs> he tells his wife and all his friends, right? He has these conversations with them. About them. Everything that had befallen him. I mean, he's feeling sorry for himself. And he is, brothers and sisters, probably one of the richest men in the kingdom. The most honored in the kingdom. It says, Then said his wise men at Zeresh, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. It's like, wait, this is a bad omen. <laughs> it's a bad sign. That you go in with the intention to kill him, or have him killed, have him hanged, and the tables are turned. I think that he's going to come out on top now. I just thought that was... I see, I see God in that, brothers and sisters. I see God in that. We're so determined, we believe, and, and not us, but brothers and sisters, uh, Haman, so sure of, 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 of the results, right? He, he sees no way in which his plan can fail. I mean, he's even built, brothers and sisters, the gallows. Why? Because he believes he has that much influence. And so far, he's had a lot of influence, brothers and sisters. But he, he believes that his plan will continue Without opposition or strong enough opposition, brothers and sisters, that anything will change. But his friends and his wives are already seeing, brothers and sisters, that things might not end or turn out the way they believed or he believed. They see this as a bad sign. Okay, we're going, to, going over this, chapter 6, uh, let me see. Okay, we read 6.13. What happens, brothers and sisters, after several banquets? Um, and the king has been asking Esther, what's on your mind? What do you want? You know, and Esther has been putting it off, brothers and sisters, and, and, and telling him that, you know, come back the next day, come back the next day. Here they are, brothers and sisters, the final night. And what does she ask for, brothers and sisters? She asks for the life of her kindred. She asks for the life of the Jews. And not only, brothers and sisters, does she say, brothers and sisters, my, my people, but I ask for my own life to be preserved and the life of my people. The way she said it, brothers and sisters, about herself, and, and, and because it's the king's job to protect his queen. And when he sees, brothers and sisters, that she's been threatened, that she has been uh, a, a attacked, brothers and sisters, her, her life is at risk, he becomes infuriated, brothers and sisters. Who would do this? Well, it's right, he's right there sitting next to you. Haman. Haman is the one that's done this. Brothers and sisters, to this, up to this point, they did not know she was a Jew. Haman did not think that she would be part of those that would be affected. 
So even Haman is surprised. And he immediately, brothers and sisters, feels afraid. Immediately feels afraid. The king orders Haman hang from the gallows that he made for Mordecai, brothers and sisters. And Mordecai is lifted up, brothers and sisters, higher than before, honored. What happens, brothers and sisters? There's a new law that's made that the Jews can defend themselves against those that would threaten them on this particular day. Um, And they did it very successfully. They they did very well in protecting themselves and and, uh, and the Jews were saved. The Jews were saved. God's people were saved, brothers and sisters, because of the courage of one woman, an orphan girl that God had placed, brothers and sisters, in the hands of, of a relative to be, uh, to be raised by him, brothers and sisters. To be tutored by him. To be counseled by him, brothers and sisters. And he did a good job, brothers and sisters, because you see how she mustered up the courage. She saw, brothers and sisters, the need for herself to take action, to save her people. What is so important about this, brothers and sisters? is that is that God has brothers and sisters men and women that he rise, raises up brothers and sisters for occasions as 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 Mordecai put it for a time as this brothers and sisters when we see brothers and sisters uh, we can see the spirit of, of Antichrist, brothers and sisters, throughout the ages, and we see, brothers and sisters, how God anoints certain individuals. He anointed men, messengers, to begin to preach the word, preach the truth, brothers and sisters. Preach, brothers and sisters, old truths. And, brothers and sisters, that truth inspired so many people, brothers and sisters, to, to, to break off the chains that, they, that, were, that were on their, on their very soul and their very spirit, brothers and sisters, and they became free from that darkness. God anointed, brothers and sisters, this young woman, Esther. He placed her in the right place at the right time just the way her uncle said. For you don't know if this is the reason why you were brought to this kingdom and placed in that chair to save your people. And brothers and sisters, when we see, um, this is just a, 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 a part seven of a, of a larger series here. Um, looking at the danger that America is in today. And I have to believe, brothers and sisters, that God has men and women, men and women positioned, brothers and sisters, they have been trained throughout their life and prepared throughout their life, brothers and sisters, to serve a purpose today to save their people, to save their country. And let me touch on another point, brothers and sisters. That Esther 
had a responsibility to act. It would have been, brothers and sisters, it would have been terribly wrong for her not to have tried. Maybe, as she said, maybe he'll see me and, and, and have me killed because I came without being announced or being requested. But she took that chance because she believed that she had a responsibility. Now, I want to tell, tell you, take you to another story. And it's only three verses. But I want to take you to Exodus chapter 1, verses 15, 16, and 17. So Exodus 1, 15, 16, and 17. And I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, of a principle that that we need to be aware of. It's very important, brothers and sisters, um, that we see this, that our young people see this. Let us read in 15. It says, and the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Puah. So you have, brothers and sisters, these two humble women, humble positions, humble jobs, midwives. You have very, very important, right? In verse 16, And he said, when ye do the office of midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. So this is, brothers and sisters, the order that the king has given, handed down to these two midwives. And I would have to believe, brothers and sisters, that there were others that, uh, that were midwives. But the order is given, brothers and sisters, if it's a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, let her live. What they were concerned of, brothers and sisters, was the strength of the Hebrew people that they were growing too strong, they had too many sons, they were, uh, 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 you know, a a, a threat to the Egyptians, because by now, brothers and sisters, they were into the millions. And so this is what he deemed as a, a good solution to this problem. We'll just get rid of all the boys. Now, you have these two, these, we'll just keep it to, to the two midwives. You have these two midwives, and, and the king, when he addresses them, brother and sister, he says, when you perform the office of midwife. To me, it's, it's funny to say it that way, when you perform the office of it. Because we all have an office, brothers and sisters, no matter... Um, where you are, your status in society. We have a place, and we have an office, brothers and sisters, that we, that, that, that we fulfill. These midwives, brothers and sisters, brought kids into the world. It was an important job. And the king gave them an immoral order and told them, Kill all the boys. Now you imagine, brothers and sisters, you're there and you're the midwives and you just got this order. You got to kill all the, the baby boys. 
What do you do? You don't think it's right, but he is the king. What happens if I don't do this? Will they come for me? It's a, it's, it's, what is right? You know what's wrong. You know what's wrong, brothers and sisters. Many would say, well, it's, uh, it's right because it comes from the king. And it would be wrong to disobey the king. A lot of people will, follow, will go with that, brothers and sisters, with that logic. And say, it, it, well, they should have listened to the king. But brothers and sisters, they knew it was wrong. And so in verse 16, and he said, I'm sorry, 17, but the midwives feared God. And did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. When it says that they feared God, brothers and sisters, when it says that they feared God, brothers and sisters, you can have, brothers and sisters, someone that, let's just say that it's an Egyptian midwife, yet she respects life. We could say she fears God in that, right? But these, these were Hebrew midwives, brothers and sisters, and they, they feared God in a more complete sense like, that we understand it. They, 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 they knew, brothers and sisters, that this command was, was wrong and it should not be obeyed. And brothers and sisters, and they decided, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. It's up to us, because we can always pass the buck and say, well, I was told to do this, right? It's not my fault. I was told to do this. Take it up with them. But wait a minute, but you're the one that's got the knife in your hand. Oh, yeah, but... Orders come from above. I want you to look at the responsibility, brothers and sisters, that's fallen on them. They're performing in their office as midwives. They know this is wrong. What are they going to do? They decide, brothers and sisters, to disobey the king and to preserve the life of of the boys. And the reason I take this, scripture, this, this story, brothers and sisters, along with the Esther story is because Esther knew that she had to act because the lives of thousands of Jews depended on her. These women, brothers and sisters, knew that the life of hundreds and thousands, perhaps, lives of boys depended on them. And so what did they do, brothers and sisters? That scripture that it says that the earth swallowed. What did it swallow, brothers and sisters? The flood. When we choose, brothers and sisters, to stand between evil and good, between right and wrong, we take the brunt of, brothers and sisters, of that which, which is now in, 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 in for you to, to, to do. Right? I am going to take that, brothers and sisters, just like the United States will one day have to defend the Jew, brothers and sisters. 
those, those poor, humble women were saying, this evil will not continue. This evil command will not be passed on. It will not. We will protect the innocent. Esther, I will protect the innocent. The um, wild boar, brothers and sisters, or the javelina, the javelin, javelin type boar, uh, wild pig. They, uh, I don't remember the word, but there's a word, brothers and sisters, when, uh, when there's a threat, usually one of them will stay behind and let himself be caught. To protect the rest. Uh, does anyone know what that is called? Um, I'm not going to remember. It's <laughs> it's a strange word, but brothers and sisters, you, they sacrifice themselves to save the rest, right? And, and it's just uh, it's uh, it's unique to them. It's unique to them, brothers and sisters. They they value. The safety of, of, of the young ones and, and the others more than their own safety. And they're, they're not like others that just try to outrun the other animal so that they're not the one that's caught. They actually will slow down, turn around, and uh, not to say that they're not going to put up a fight, but brothers and sisters, but they're going to keep them busy while the rest of them get away. It's just part of their nature. But brothers and sisters, years ago I, I, uh, I mentioned a, a principle that, uh, that I called, it, not that I called it, but it's, it was, uh, it's called the principle of the second magistrate. It's been quite a few years. The principle of the second magistrate. And what the principle of the, principle of the second magistrate says, brothers and sisters, is that that one, it's a second magistrate because, because the responsibility falls on the one that receives the command. You are the second magistrate. No matter who you are and your position, you're always second to the one that gives you the order. So you're given a, an order to follow. And you have to judge whether that order is a legitimate order, brothers and sisters, and should be obeyed or if it shouldn't be obeyed because it's immoral and it, uh, it's a, it's, it hurts the innocent. And so, brothers and sisters, what the Nazis should have done, what the Nazi soldiers should have done is I'm not killing the Jews. This isn't right. It doesn't matter how many times you order me to put them in, in the gas chamber. I'm not going to do that because that's not a legitimate order. You have to kill me before I do that. And so, brothers and sisters, what does he do? He stands in the gap. And he pays with his life. And a lot of men, a lot of people, brothers and sisters, have had to do that. Right? These women stood in the gap. They said, this evil will not be, will not be continued through me. I will not obey this law, this rule, this decree. Because it's not right. We go from a humble midwife to the queen of the most powerful empire at that time, brothers and sisters, the Persian Empire. And she saw her responsibility to take action, even if it cost her her life, in order to save and protect the innocent. This is a principle, brothers and sisters, that we see throughout the Scriptures. We see it in Jesus Christ. He died for us. He died 
for you and for me, brothers and sisters, which we're not innocent. (laughs) We're not innocent. Yet he died for us, brothers and sisters. Even greater. If we were innocent, brothers and sisters, maybe we wouldn't look up to him as much as we did others who have done the same. But he did it for his, brothers and sisters, he did it for his enemies and, 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 and for people that were sinners. Sinners like us. Brothers and sisters, there's a responsibility that falls on key men and women today to take action. They will be judged, brothers and sisters, according to what they do in our government. We see, brothers and sisters, And we have learned a lot about the quality of the character of the men in government, brothers and sisters. They don't have any. And they just follow what they're told. And brothers and sisters, they'll have to answer to God for that. But brothers and sisters, if, 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 as Mordecai told Esther, if salvation does not come through you, It'll come through someone else. And that's something, brothers and sisters, to keep in mind. God's plan will be fulfilled. God's plan will be fulfilled. If it's not one way, it's another way. But God's plan will be fulfilled, brothers and sisters. But men and women have responsibilities. In in the office that you are in right now, To put a stop to anything, brothers and sisters, that will hurt the innocent, anything, brothers and sisters, that will threaten your, the rights of those that are below you. We have a responsibility. So I leave you with this thought, brothers and sisters. I hope that it, it allows you to see, brothers and sisters, and I started out with, how do we look at things as Christians? There are ways to look at things, brothers and sisters. We look at the Scriptures and we see what the Scriptures teach us concerning other men, other women that have stood in these positions who have had, brothers and sisters, the weight of thousands of lives on their shoulders. And we can see, brothers and sisters, how now we, they are remembered. These midwives are remembered thousands of years later, brothers and sisters, because of an act they did. Because they feared God and refused to obey A just a terrible decree, brothers and sisters. A terrible order. We can do, brothers and sisters, or, 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 or many can try to just say, wash your hands like Pilate and say, I clean my hands, I'm not responsible. Yet you are responsible because you had the power to do right. And you didn't do it. You passed on the buck. And you left it to the other one. Let us learn from this, brothers and sisters. And uh, I always like to look for opportunities to teach my, my son and daughter about these things because it, 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 just, it, just, it just happens so quickly, brothers and sisters, the, the opportunity to, to, to uh, and some call these teaching moments or life moments or right teachable moments. You look for those opportunities to... to to inculcate these lessons. They'll never forget them because they're powerful, brothers and sisters. You show them the choice they made, whether it was right or it was wrong, and you just make them think, make them think about what they, what they did and the importance, brothers and sisters, of one, one act, one quick action. Let us all stand.
Precious Father, Lord, I've taken this time, Lord. Lord, and uh, I just uh, do believe, Lord, that there is something here. Lord, I pray that they can all see the value in it, Lord. I ask that you just bless it to their understanding. Lord, let them take it, Lord, in their minds and their hearts, Lord. And just, uh, and just ponder upon it, Lord. Pray for, Lord, our country that uh, they seem to have not, they don't, um, many just, Lord, are, are, don't make a stand. Don't make a stand for what's right. And Lord, but Lord, all it takes is, is one, just one. And Lord, and one can make a difference. And we see it in your word. Lord, just bless your people, Father. And bless, Lord, those that are here and those that are not here, Lord. Meet every need, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.